Hi guys, welcome to Pointy Not Sharp. Uh, as I mentioned in my last video, uh, my big package has arrived and I'm going to do an unboxing video today. Now, uh, it's quite a large box, so my tripod is all the way at the top and I've only just managed to keep it in frame. So apologies for that, it's going to be a bit of a um, cramped video today. Pretty excited about this, uh, this box actually. It's come from Hong Kong. Use my FN49 bayonet to cut it open. These things are nasty sharp if you get if you can get one. But I've tried to forget what I've got. Ah, oh, come on. So it's a bit of a surprise for me. Pretty well packed. Let's see if I can get in. Alright, let's see what we've got. Oh yeah. Lots of stuff. So first up, what's this one? Swiss. That's right. Model 1899. Really nice. Sorry, it's a bit cramped here. I'm up against the wall. Yeah, nice one. Yeah, sorry, I'm looking at this uh, for the first time myself as well, so um, apologies if it's uh, not always in frame. Yeah, that's really nice. I like that. All right. Stick that to the side. This is going to be a bit of a mess, I can tell. Uh, what do we got next? Ooh. 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 Yep, I remember exactly what this one is. This one's actually not a bayonet. This one's a fighting knife. I'm very excited about this one. KCB 77 Long CS. Let's have a look at it. Is there a trick to getting this out? Do I have to press something or? That is really nice. It's sort of got that, like, the camera doesn't show it too well, but it's got kind of a red plummy color to the blade. That's pretty typical of um, German in the 70s and 80s. A lot of their blues have turned red over time. So it needs a little bit of a clean up, a little bit of corrosion. Whoop, down here. That's cool. It's got the wire cutter down the bottom here. I've wanted a KCB 77 for a long time, and the long ones are just extra cool. Ideally, I prefer a bayonet, but hey, I'll take this. This is bloody cool. Chuck the paper out of the way. next uh, ah. which is this one I think this is a uh, Turkish model of um, 1935 in a what kind of frog is that it looks like a Yugoslavian M44 frog I've needed one of these for a very long time and um, a lot bigger than they look in photos like i thought this would be a similar size to uh, the chilean model of 1895 or something but it feels much bigger a lot sturdier much heavier is it sharp no what's next Ooh. So this is the only one in the box that isn't actually mine. One of my friends got this one. Let me just combine the shipping. Uh, G3, extra long, and it's got that really nice sort of resiny uh, laminated wood scabbard. I forget what they call it. Um, I've done another video on the, oh yes. I was just talking about that, that plum finish on the German blades, and that is absolutely beautiful. That's the nicest I've ever seen. And that that's pristine. That's... That's never been used at all. The handle's quite nice too. Oh, that's I'm very jealous of this one. <laughs> I wish I got it for myself. That is just that's really nice. Uh, small boy. Taped up. Oh, I remember what this is. This is a um another jet pilot survival knife. It was really cheap and I had to have it. Uh, let's see if there's any markings on it, because I couldn't see any markings 
in the photo. So nothing on the Ricasso and got one on the Pommel. Got Ontario. Oh, I'll bring it back into the camera. Ontario 280. Little jiggly. That's all right. I mean, it's 42 years old. Looks very well used, very well worn. And it's got a really high plate on the back of the uh, sheath. I'm trying to change my terminology a little bit. Like, um, if it's sort of a, a hard fixed body, I'm going to determine that it's a scabbard. But if it's like a, a leather piece that it slips into, I'm happy to call it a sheath. I don't know if there's any correct nomenclature or naming conventions out there, but that's sort of what I'm personally leaning towards. Uh, another small one. What's this? What is this? Ah, that's right. Polish AK-47. Got our Circle 11 for Polish and serial number right where it's supposed to be. Beautiful. From memory, this one was sharpened. It's in pretty rough condition, but hey, I got it for a fantastic price. So yeah, I mean, the sharpen's not the best, but yeah, whatevs. I've never come across another one of these. I like it. Now, a couple of these don't have scabbards. So I'm trying to be a bit careful. I'm sure they're correctly wrapped up and packaged, but I don't want to stick myself again because I've done it many times before. Ooh, another G3, Turkish. I've never actually seen one of these in real life. Got the fuller ring down one side of the blade. Down but that's odd. So you've got the fuller running down one side and then you flip it over. So the fuller's on this side on the other, yeah. It changes sides on. Yeah, that, that's crazy. It's weird. It's trippy. There's a big catch on it. Look at that. Uh, I got this one cheap as well because the handle's a little melted. Not sure what would have done that. It's missing the frog stud. Again, I don't mind things that are a little bit damaged, a little bit worn. Actually, that is a really heavy scabbard. I don't mind things that, yeah, a bit damaged, a bit worn. That, that doesn't bother me too much. Um, what could this one be? Oh, yep. This is my favourite. This is the one that had me the most excited out of a lot of them. This is, I definitely wasn't going to forget this. Now, it might just look like a um, 84 slash 98, nothing too special, except for a bunch of the markings. So first and foremost, we have, uh, you're not gonna make this out in the camera the way I've got it set up, because I've got my lights in, in bad places. I've got regimental markings there for field artillery. So that means that this was made prior to 1914. So that makes this a, uh, Mark one or the first iteration of 84 uh, 98s. They were the ones made without the flash guard, so the flash guard was added later. Then second to that, we have, bring my light up, focus please, a 1920 stamp, which means, that, that's a property stamp, uh, essentially after the Treaty of Versailles, so after the First World War, Germany had like 18 million rifles or something crazy, and um, Treaty of Versailles limited them down to 100,000, and uh, the 100,000 they kept were given property marks, which was a 1920 stamp. So this is one of the very, very few to have uh, this property stamp. They're, they're very hard to find. Like I've only seen two or three sell. Um, that gets me very excited. And uh, finally, it's got a very deep blue added flash guard. And if you look closely, the flash guard has like checkering to it. That's an East German refurbishment. So this is a bayonet that it's been, it's done everything. Pre-World War One, World War One, the interwar years, World War Two, and the Cold War. The amount of history in this thing, it's crazy. I love it. Even though like no scabbard and it's got the heavy blue, which aesthetically isn't great. I just really appreciate the history in this. Um, I love anything that has a lot of history that you can track. And that 
that that just does it for me. That that ticks all my boxes. Um, what are you? Ah, so got our check markings here. Ah, this is a VZ22, so the short version of the VZ24. And got a bunch of interesting markings on it. I'm not too great with my VZ24 and VZ... Focus, please, gee. Uh, 22 and 23 markings, so I'll have to um, read up on those again before I do a video. But this is very cool. Got a serial number here on the pommel as well. I like it. I like it a lot. Go in this way, no, go in this way. Cool. That pile is getting quite big. Uh, ooh. It's got me. Yep. Now, this is something I've been <laughs> a little nervous about. The the Erats bayonets, uh, or the so the the emergency bayonets is made by Germany and used in Turkey. Um, I haven't done any videos on them. I haven't owned any before, but I've ripped off the Band-Aid and I bought a couple. And um, it's a very steep learning curve. There's a lot to know. Very, very heavy, actually. Pull that out. So my understanding is this is originally German and then modified for Turkish use. So I could be wrong. Uh, no, it's got German property mark on the spine down there. I'll have to read up on these because I really don't know enough. Like, I don't know what blade this has been adapted for, but it's a very heavy-duty blade with a very large squared fuller. So, I mean, the fuller screams um, Chasse bayonet to me, but it wouldn't be, surely not. It'd be something else. But, yep, very steep learning curve. Um, I've probably got to buy a couple of books to get my head around these. They're still a bit of a mystery to me. There's so many different ones they like. Yeah. I need to do a lot of reading. Um, not too many left. Like what? Five left maybe? What's this one? Ah. Yugo 44. Appropriate frog. And the serial numbers match? They do. A look and unmarked so it's an export now the seller advertised this initially as a uh, Syrian uh, issued one however he was uncertain why he had it listed as that uh, maybe it was a, an error or maybe he's forgotten because he had a very large collection but um, very interesting I look forward to reading up on it other than the serial number I don't see any markings so I'm probably not going to be able to determine where it was issued but um, I need one of these. The one I've already filmed was uh, a friend's. Little bubble wrap. Uh, I'll get a feel for what they are. Just see if I can remember what they are. I like feel alone. Yep. So, got another 84.98, and this one is Turkish because uh, you can tell it's very, very rough. Replaced grips. The grips are... In the photos initially, I thought they were like some kind of composite because they look like all chippy like they do here in the camera. But there's really poorly finished wood. And uh, very, very rough scabbard. Very heavy. Got a weld running down the side. Let's have a look at the blade. That's rough as hell. There you go. Another look. Uh, anything on the spine, actually? Nothing I can make out. It's been worn away. There was something there, but it's been scrubbed. That'll be a fun one to film, a lot of research. How many left? Another three, four. More bubble wrap. Now, what are you? Ooh. Yeah, this is... Um, Another one that I was really, really excited about. Um, you probably won't guess initially what this is. It uh, was a crag. Um, either 
So you, you'd be thinking it's the, the short one, the uh, 1894, 1896, whatever they call them, I can't remember. I'm not huge on Norwegian bayonets, I've never been great at them. But this is actually the long version, the um, 1913 and 1916, again, I can't really remember. And uh, it's been shortened. Oh wow, I'm sorry, I gotta press the button. As you can see, it has a fuller, and the fuller was on the long version, not the short version. So this was a long version that's been shortened, and the reason for that is it was shortened uh, on German capture. So this is actually a Zeitengewehr 103N. Let's have a look at the markings, actually. I want to do a video eventually on um, German captured Zeitengewehrs. So I've got another one coming as well. It's not here, but... Um, I really like them, like uh, long bayonets that were captured by Germany in the Second World War, shortened and repurposed and uh, redesignated. From what I can tell, no one's done like a comprehensive, like there's comprehensive lists out there, I've got one in German, but um, no one's done a comprehensive list with photos showing how they've been modified. Like they weren't all modified, it was pretty much only the long ones that were. But I'd love to put a video together, something like that. Another Eras. If I'm mispronouncing that, please yell at me in the comments. Um, I've never actually heard how it's pronounced. I've only read it. Okay. Wow, there's a thick blade. That is very heavy and a very, very thick blade. Like, that that's um, definitely some kind of Victorian era bayonet because that's just, you can feel it, just the, the curves in it. Um... I believe this is another German one that's been shortened for Turkish use. So the Eretz bayonets do actually have um, a designation. It's usually like a EB and a number like 45, 47, or whatever number it is. I think it's like 500 of them. It's crazy how many different kinds there are. And EB, from my understanding, stands for Eretz bayonet. But I could be wrong. I'll find out shortly when I start reading up on them. Uh, who are you? Ah! So this one was a bit of a mystery box. Now, the seller had it advertised as a Chilean model of 1895, which I've already got, uh, but he said there were no Chilean markings on it. So I could tell it was a model 1895 bayonet, and 1895s were made for more than just Chile, however they're difficult to find for other countries. So, I haven't actually had a look at the close markings yet, being the proof marks to determine where it's from. Let's have a look. Ah, it's Chilean. It's another Chilean. Got a Chilean proof mark on the scabbard there. Got another one on the mouth. And just having a close look at the blade. Sorry if you can't see what I'm doing, but there's definitely no markings on the blade. So, I think there was one like on the, on the cross guard or something, but... I can't remember. So maybe this is a 1895 that was exported to another country. Maybe it's Chilean that just doesn't have the markings. I don't know. I don't know if I'll be able to find out, but um, I like it. Cool. Uh, last one. Chuck that box out of the way. I don't know if I've saved best for last because I don't have a clue what it is yet. Ooh, yes I do. This is a good one. This is a very good one. In my opinion, I like them. So, got a L1, uh, A3. Condition is fantastic. Got a bunch of markings. We've even got electro penciled in uh, broad arrow where my finger is. That's that's cool. I've never seen that before. And we've got the normal L1 A3 markings running down the grip. Uh, another proof uh, broad arrow down here on the pommel. What else do we have? Looks like there's an F that's been scratched into the handle at some point. Um, I've never looked at one of these up close before. I've never got to play with one. There are markings down here. I'm going to go take it off camera for a sec and I'll sort of call out what I can see. Got B61 and another broad arrow that's been uh, carved or electro-penciled into the Ricasso. So that's very cool. Um, nice and firm. I'm looking forward to doing a video on this one. I like these. Got that uh, big circular hole around the press, 
press button there. And um, scabbard. It's got a, that's different. All the other number five style ones I've come across have a brass throat, whether this is black. Obviously they've got the wrong notch, the, not, the frog stud should be in between, so it's nice and flush up the top, but it's not wrong. Just aesthetically not very pleasing. Me being perfectionist. And I've got a green frog. And what's that? 1964 with a broad arrow or 1984? I can't make that out. I'll look it under a bit under a better light. Anyway, guys, um, that was a lot of fun and a very long video actually. But um, these are what we have coming in the next couple of months. Uh, I've also got another one or two that have arrived uh, separately to these and um, I'm also trying to get in with one of the local auction houses. We'll see if they'll have me. Uh, they've got quite a few really cool interesting ones. Um, I might have been inspired by Ian McCollum from Forgotten Weapons but if I can get in with one of the local auction houses then I'll be set for content and I'll get access to some absolutely amazing stuff. But we'll see how we go. I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly did. And um, I'm going to go play with these. Cheers for watching.